let us continue. Continue uh, the work of our uh, deep session on knowledge through history. Our session is entitled Historical Heritage as a Formative Environment. And while our counterparts are on the way back um, to the audience hall, we will resume our session. I'm um, um, Konstantin Mogilevsky, Deputy Minister of Science and Higher Education of the Russian Federation, co-chairman of the Russian Historical Society. And let us begin with the following consideration. Uh, let me um, put it forward uh, for the discussion. And I will ask the participants I'm going to introduce a bit later to um, respond um, to what I'm going to say. So I'm not uh, uh, a local person, so to speak. I'm not from St. Petersburg originally, but I visit the city quite often. And I walk along the streets here and the embankments. And uh, uh, here I am, let's say, in the palace square. And right away, I have a feeling that in this environment, in this architectural and cultural environment, there must emerge some uh, unusual people. Because this environment cannot uh, but um, um, uh, create very special people, um, should really have a serious impact on these people. That's one consideration of mine. And then the second one is as follows. Peter the Great and uh, his um, descendants uh, the ones who founded St. Petersburg, the ones who built St. Petersburg, who were inspired by the experience of European culture and European architecture, those of Western Europe. And um, a great contribution into the building of St. Petersburg comes from uh, Peter's associates, from uh, countries which are part of the European culture. Uh, so 80 years ago, in the history of St. Petersburg, Leningrad, there occurred uh, the most tragic event <clears throat> in its history, the siege of uh, Leningrad, uh, um, a cruel act uh, against uh, its people inflicted on the city by the representatives of that same European culture. And uh, how is that possible? How does that combine uh, in the history of the city? Uh, uh, Peter, inspired by Europe and uh, Nazism coming from the West that uh, took away um, dozens of millions of our citizens and hundreds of thousands of the people of Leningrad. What trace have these historical and historic events left in the life of our people today? And what impact they might have on the uh, people who come here? And uh, so we'll talk about this and about many other things with the participants of our discussion, namely Alexei Shaposhnikov, uh, the head of the Moscow State Duma, Hashir Dene Sambalkundev, um, uh, representing the Knowledge Society of Mongolia. Yelena Gagarina, Director General of the uh, Moscow Kremlin Historical and Cultural Museum. Mikhail Afanasyev, Director of the um, uh, Historical Public Library of Russia. Alexander Larin. Uh, chairman of the uh, Board of Trustees of the Tavalga Foundation, uh, Muhammad Bassam Abdel Rahman, uh, uh, representing the United Arab Emirates, uh, the Fund of Cultural Diplomacy. Now, uh, Mr. Abdel Rahman, we, st we begin with you, if you don't mind.
Hello, everyone. I would like first to thank for the invitation and uh, our pleasure to be joining such a kind of important event. Okay, so uh, just because we are present uh, from the so, <clears throat> my first question is addressed to those uh, colleagues of ours who understood it in Russian. And then we'll ask you the next question. Right. Yeah. All right. So, my question then is addressed to Yelena Yurievna, Yelena Gagarina. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to say a few words um, uh, about our discussion and the, on, on the theme of our discussion. It seems to me that the most important things we should discuss today is culture as memory. The attempt, uh, even a rhetoric attempt, to divide and to oppose to each other the notions of history and culture, uh, which are in the title of this session, is artificial. Uh, there is an um, obvious connection between those two. Culture is impossible outside of time, history, outside the development of the historical process. That is the very basis of its existence, and it defines the ideological basis of any culture, its language, its form, and style. style. And culture is not just a component of human history, but it's the main result, and it's the main achievement. Of it. Uh, according to Con Confucius, a uh, uh, human being does not have a better um, uh, duty than to be a human being and to be a creator of culture, the only reality that is entirely created by human beings. Culture, that's what um, uh, lives uh, through the fall of civilizations, IP, uh, um, empires and wars and uh, technical revolutions, and uh, to everything created by uh, human beings in the attempt to dominate and to the material benefits, the cultural values uh, remain unchanged. And um, um, an outstanding um, uh, 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 literary historian, uh, Yuri Lotman said um, that culture actually carries out the function of the transfer of memory about the historical uh, route taken by the society. But if uh, culture is our memory, can it help us understand the historical past? The answer seems to be obvious. There are great layers of history. We get acquainted with those not through the textbooks at the universities or schools. Textbooks hardly ever are able to evoke the interest to history and, and love of history. Our understanding of the period of time of individuals, uh, of events, is very often formed uh, thanks to literature, thanks to painting and cinema, thanks to the works of art in which time find its concentrated manifestation and precise manifestation. Br brilliant images, the ability to see the most important features of the epoch appeal to the uh, emotions very often make it possible for make it necessary for us to focus on literature rather than on history and the artist uh, with intriguing intuition um, wins uh, uh, in competition with the historian creating uh, the image of the uh, epoch uh, sometimes neglecting details allow me to uh, say the following in spite of the great documentary um, uh, books and and on the uh, memoirs dedicated to 8 and 12 war. Most of the people are unhappy with what Tolstoy spoke about the uh, war. Uh, but his novel, The War and Peace, uh, um, formed the understanding of those events with the generations uh, that came after him. Our knowledge of the Second World War mostly is associated with great literature and cinematography of the 1960s and 70s. Well, the uh, dispute between Uh, many uh, uh, about the um, uh, scientific reliability and um, imagery will never be over. But culture actively is involved in the formation of the historical memory, and thus the reflex about the mechanism of its impact on our uh, mind is necessary. Now, 
uh, can uh, uh, culture be a specific instrument in learning of uh, uh, history in the professional sphere? First of all, due to the fact that it retains the uh, material and artistic values, which are uh, historical sources, this is materialized memory, which can be visualized um, for the widest public very often, which is very often far away from reading historical monographs. And uh, in a museum, a visitor goes through emotional perception of history. Moreover, the museums of the Moscow Kremlin is a whole set of architectural monuments, which were not just witnesses of history, but history actually occurred within the walls, its palaces, its cathedrals, the armory chamber, which retains the state regalia and the memorial gifts and items. All these are historical sources which, as I see it, uh, are still undervalued by the professional um, researchers. Uh, uh, there is an interesting experience of cultural and historical research that is being carried out in the Moscow Kremlin uh, today. I mean the exhibition, Legends of the Kremlin, Russian Romanticism and the Armory Chamber. Now, it is dedicated to uh, the, uh, the um, most interesting epoch uh, associated with the increase of national self-understanding and the upsurge of um, patriotic feelings um, in the days of Napoleonic Wars. In those days, Russia's many other countries began to study the medieval age, um, history of the period, the myths and legends of those days, in order to understand what really formed the nation. And the first in that field were not the historians, but the um, writers, uh, romantics, Karamzin, who wrote about the history of the Russian state, who, according to Pushkin, opened up uh, the domestic um, history for the Russians as the Columbus did for the America. Zhukovsky, Batushkov, Baratinsky, Pushkin, Relief, they created the images of the ancient uh, um, princes and historical characters, Igor, Oleg, Alexander Nevsky, Dmitry Donskoy, and Yermak. The past was romanticized and was fooled with legends and myths. And the basis of our exhibition are the legends uh, that emerged in the first half of the 19th century around the exhibits of the uh, Imperial Armory Chamber, which by that time had been turned into a public museum containing the uh, relics and the um, exhibits associated with the national history. So in the collection of the Moscow Kremlin, there appeared the summer of uh, um, Emperor uh, Constantine the Great, uh, allegedly a whole set of different regalia that came from Constantinople, according to the legend, uh, the helmet of Alexander the throne of Ivan the Terrible, the saber of Menin and Pajarsky. Now, uh, <clears throat> how can we explain the delusions of the um, uh, researchers of those days? The matter is not the lack of knowledge and the inability to attribute properly the items, but the spirit of the time made them look for valuable um, artifacts that was so important to present them in the armory chamber under the imaginary portraits of the um, imaginary elders of those. And uh, allow me to finish with the following. The, uh, a poem by Alexander Pushkin about two uh, feelings that are very close to us and to our heart, the love of the ashes of the land and the love of the coffins buried in our land. And now, um, the self-understanding of human beings is associated with those, and that is the prerequisite of the greatness of men. That was most interesting indeed, dedicated uh, to the topic of our um, session and to the theme. Allow me to um, uh, go back uh, to the question that I asked, if possible, in a couple of words. Could you tell us? What do you think? The historical heritage, the environment, do they have an impact on the personality? Or are they just the background and the personality is under the influence of very other circumstances and environments? It seems to me that all these 
well-respected participants of our discussion understand quite well that history and historical environment and culture, that's exactly that has an impact on the personality as well as the language and national literature. Thank you very much. It was very important to hear, and I'm addressing the same question to Alexei Shapashnikov. Alexei Valerich, please. Uh, uh, what I would like to offer is uh, um, a, a brief answers to my brief and succinct questions. So um, we need to hear the answers that would be memorable and. Uh, excitingly formulated. Well, it's lack of uh, equality. You will stimulate us with uh, brief and succinct questions, expecting us to give uh, um, exciting and memorable answers. But I'll support uh, the previous speaker, Elena Gagarina, and uh, I will uh, mention the um, mobilization of um, 1812. And uh, this uh, historical heritage is affecting uh, the formation of a personality. Depending on what a child and an adolescent uh, sees around, what he can read and see uh, in terms of artworks, it is important. The Moscow uh, mobilization of 1612 or of 1812, and you also remember the besieged Leningrad, and it overlaps with the Moscow popular mobilization uh, in uh, since, uh, 41. Uh, I'm head of the Moscow State Duma, but I'm originally from Gatchina near Leningrad, St. Petersburg. My aunt lived through the siege of Leningrad, and my grandmother was the one who evacuated the um, orphanage during that time. So, but when nine years ago, the Moscow State Duma started to research into the popular uh, just mobilization, uh, we were unable to understand why this issue was silenced and we achieved a lot. And listening uh, to Helena, I um, uh, realized that we're using many different tools and mechanisms to translate and transform, uh, to, to transfer this memory to school children and students, not only Moscow-based ones. Uh, 200,000 Moscovites, uh, out of them 99% never returned back from the battlefields, participated in this uh, militia forces, militia army. So uh, there was a Vazimsky uh, pot uh, battle, and they perished all there in 1941, so uh, otherwise uh, the victory wouldn't have been possible. So it was the um, due to them that the victory under Moscow in the battle was won. And um, in 2015, we started using all this dissemination and increasing awareness um, tools. The Moscow Popular Militia Army um, uh, was our focus, and just there were over 30 school museums that uh, are preserving the memories of the Moscow popular um, the militia forces. We published eight different books speaking on the different divisions. There were 16 divisions altogether formed the Moscow school students uh, tour the battle sites, uh, both uh, ordinary school students and military cadets, and they interact with the uh, search uh, uh, squadron so that are engaged in um, researching this. So there is a monument that was uh, also installed in memory of that event. Home archives were another focus of ours. So Moscow families have so many letters, photographs, um, um, uh, that were carefully preserved in the families of those who went uh, to this militia forces. And uh, uh, so many students of creative industries also were part of that defending Moscow. We uh, cannot count the exact number of these because there are 
uh, some documents lacking. So answering the first question, the environment in which a person lives and works does directly affect his upbringing, his historical um, um, worldview and preservation of the historical no uh, memory. So we're trying to bridge uh, the militia forces formation starting from 1612 to 1812 to 1941 so that we could share information about the heroic deed of our nation and Russian people. Thank you very much. So I'm addressing my uh, next question to you, uh, Mr. Abdan Al-Rahman. So the question remains the same. I'll uh, modify and specify this question a little bit for you. During our last session, uh, we talked with your uh, um, colleague, also from the United Arab Emirates, uh, that uh, your country is a young country, while the nation is a nation that uh, prides itself on a, a very old, diverse culture. And your colleague said that the creators, the founders of the United Arab Emirates, did um, realize how important it was to preserve the national heritage and historical memory that it will be very important for the um, citizens of the newly created uh, state. In your perspective, the cultural heritage, the cultural environment, what role does it play in forming the personalities of the generations to come? Hello again. Uh, that's right. The uh, UAE is a small country, and uh, the heritage of uh, UAE is considered new. But actually, uh, this heritage is affected or influenced by the founder, by the founder of UAE, Sheikh Zayed. So uh, back to the uh, question about how the cultural environment influence and uh, make uh, make influence on the formation of personality. Is the same which would make influence on formation the heritage of, let's say, such as UAE. Personality formation can be influenced by genetics and ecology, which is as uh, the normal. But beside this, the formation of a person is also influenced by so many factors, which is like socialization and cultures, cultural values, norms cultural identity, and language, and communication style. Family traditions, customs, uh, country traditions, and customs of the country also, it will make big influence on inherited folklores, which is, and also so many aspects related to history. And there are so many different cultures in different countries in the world. That's why we are different. That's why we have different cultures. That's why we have different uh, traditions. That's why we have different uh, way of uh, 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 conveying the messages of our cultures. We all absorb part of our special cultures and upbringings. So uh, this is I like my uh, answer to such uh, to this question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I'll um, elaborate on your conclusive remarks and uh, ask Mr. Sambal Khundev, who represents Mongolia, and he's a well-known person in his country. But uh, answering the question, who is the product of which culture, uh, in, in, in terms of your perspective, I would be um, puzzled uh, to give an uh, unequivocal answer to. You belong both to Russian and Mongolian culture because you lived and worked here in Russia for a long time. You have a lot of friends here. And we do see how Mongolian uh, self-consciousness and ident identity is developing and how important is the role 
that the historical heritage and cultural heritage play. The Genghis Khan Museum, it's a cutting edge modern museum that was uh, opened in Mongolia recently. In your perspective, to what extent does it all work out? How much does it affect the formation of a personality? How much does the um, Mongolian young people uh, affected by what has been happening in the recent times? Um, good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, may I start by answering the, the question? And uh, before doing that, I'd like to thank the organizers who uh, uh, provided a unique platform for intercultural exchange and communication here. As to the role that the culture uh, plays in forming um, personalities in Mongolia today is a, is a difficult uh, question because this is a nomadic and um, um, the other cultures that blend together because nomadic culture was based on the folklore and uh, oral uh, education in establishing links with Russia uh, and uh, through Russia uh, onto the international culture and uh, and thus the settled culture was gradually established. So the country that created two empires, that of Gunz and uh, Genghis Khan, left uh, historical uh, heritage from uh, uh, Danube to Russia in the Middle um, Asia and in many Russian and R European countries and Russian regions. And we are uh, hosting this forum here in St. Petersburg, a historical city that has a, a lot of archival and other monuments related to Mongolia. The modern cultural institutions are linked uh, with uh, Russian counterparts, both in the Tsarist Russia, the Soviet period, and modern Russia as well. In the, ninth, uh, in the 20th century, <coughs> So in the 20th century, the country was uh, formed uh, on the way from the nomadic culture through the uh, Soviet uh, European culture. And uh, it was associated with the um, uh, creation of the uh, people's uh, intellectuals uh, um, uh, uh, in the humanitarians, uh, in the economic sphere. Um, and all this was happening through the language. Uh, in our case, uh, through the Russian language. And <clears throat> so when uh, uh, when the uh, globalization impact became strong on the one hand, uh, but um, so then, but uh, then at the same time, there was uh, also manifestation of the national uh, culture, traditions, uh, uh, typical of the countries that want uh, to retain in this uh, world of today their historical uh, memory, heritage, and culture. In this sense, uh, Mongolia uh, is uh, uh, diverse. This is uh, related to the fact that there are several genera generations of people who were brought up under different conditions. There is a generation brought up on Soviet ideology and culture. Uh, and I'm talking about this in a positive sense, uh, because the um, uh, knowledge of the Russian language um, um, <clears throat> left a very uh, serious uh, trace uh, in the uh, modern um, culture of the Mongolian society through uh, literature and culture and uh, uh, art. So um, it's, uh, 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 this heritage and historical memory um, uh, was consolidated in the days of the Second World War. And uh, here I need to mention the Halkingol battle. And next year we're going to mark 85 years of the battle. and. Uh, uh, then there was also the Liberation War of 1945, 
when the People's Army of Mongolia, together with the Red Army, liberated uh, China, Manchuria in particular. So uh, this is all historical experience and historical memory. Uh, it should be capitalized, so to speak. It should be ingrained in our consciousness. And uh, the selective approach uh, here to history is inappropriate. <coughs> um, uh, um, we should um, relate uh, to each and every period in history of, of on the basis of the situation of those days, when history now is being politicized. Uh, uh, the uh, history gets uh, rewritten. Uh, uh, um, uh, the young people, after the 1990s, when the country um, uh, moved uh, to the market economy, democratic development, the country became more open, and the access uh, through uh, mass media, uh, uh, through uh, online and internet resources uh, to information became overwhelming. In the past, we were short of information, but at present, there is a, a surplus of information. And the young generation that uh, does not have uh, experience yet uh, uh, find it difficult to uh, 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 filter the information and use the information that is good for their uh, consciousness. So the young people in Mongolia at present um, uh, 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 looking into the future, and they are quite vanguard uh, young people. And if you take the way they entertain themselves, so the interests are um, uh, consumer-like, and which is against the traditional values of the Mongolian people. So uh, today, we should um, instill the cultural values uh, um, uh, through the dialogue, uh, through the uh, through mutual understanding of history, and uh, uh, so uh, finally. When answering your question, uh, I would like to emphasize that the, uh, the, uh, it is very important to bring together the cultural values uh, that uh, uh, work for the peoples uh, drawing closer to each other. We should focus attention on what unites us rather than on what divides us. and uh, traditions that make us different. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, you said that uh, Mongolian heritage, Mongolian culture of the nomadic culture and uh, uh, the culture of the settled people, uh, you spoke about those. I remember I visited the uh, Mongolian Museum and the Genghis uh, Han Museum. Of course, uh, there is a lot of attention paid there to the archaeological heritage. And uh, you know, some of my good friends, archaeologists, work in Mongolia and uh, uh, excavate uh, this archaeological heritage and help to preserve it and conserve it. Well, of course, uh, this all speaks about the uh, way uh, peoples in the uh, past lived and lived in very different, uh, <coughs> very differently under very different conditions. And uh, my next question is to Alexander Larin. Uh, Alexander, you are the chairman of the uh, Tavolga uh, uh, <coughs> Board of Trustees. You're a philanthropist and uh, you pay a lot of attention to the archaeological uh, uh, research and uh, the conservation of archaeological heritage. Why is that so important for you? Why should we do it? Uh, who, who is the important uh, uh, user or customer in this sense, uh, people, the state, or involved? Why is it so important to study this heritage and conserve it? Thank you very much for your question. 
You know, all your questions are, on the one hand, simple from the point of view of a simple response to them, but on the other hand, uh, um, they, uh, they, uh, they take time to speak about. So, uh, as for historical heritage, it's um, a combination of different components, uh, monuments of architecture, uh, arch as I said, architecture, material, culture, but uh, archaeological heritage plays a very significant role in all of that because in this sense, um, uh, everything that is associated with the mem memory of our um, uh, ancestors um, um, helps us create a historical bridge. I was at the previous session and I liked what uh, our Serbian colleague said, he said that only a stupid person can assume that no, uh, history is dead and that memory is dead. Uh, so I work in the fields uh, uh, with the archaeological finds um, uh, actually proves uh, uh, the, uh, the that there is a unique historical space that uh, actually is responsible for the national code. Now, who can order that or commission that? Uh, individuals, the state, uh, our people of the country, all of us, all of us, individuals, the people who live in the country, um, um, the state, um, because when getting acquainted with the history, we all develop. Uh, uh, now, through the archaeological finds, uh, it is possible to create the continuity of generations, and it's easier to understand how the outstanding state we live in was built. And with all of that, it is necessary to understand that over quite a long period of time, over the whole period of the, our existence, uh, the country has been mentally competing with other states and other uh, unions of states. And um, in order to prove that we are competitive, that uh, we have a right you know, to be a great state, a great nation, uh, to be a carrier of the national code, uh, Russian identity as related to cultural and uh, language heritage, it is necessary to, to know what was happening on our land. And um, then uh, there is one very important aspect here as well. Uh, it's the work carried out by the fund. Namely, we uh, uh, carry out quite a lot of research, but moreover, we disseminate the knowledge, uh, the results of that uh, among our people uh, through publications for example, it might be interesting for you to know, but over the past five years, we uh, worked with about 35 million people. That is a lot. I'm talking about people whom we informed about the results of our work. That's uh, my answer to your question. Thank you. That was very clear and very interesting. Thank you very much for the work you are doing. And now, uh, my question is to Mikhail, Mikhail Afanasyev, director of the um, State um, Historical Public Library, one of the uh, larger libraries in Russia. I think that many of those who are here, if not all of us, uh, asked a question at a certain time. And what is a library these days? What is a library in the future? The world is changing. So is it just the tangible material heritage? Is that an a sort of an environment? I was in the United Arab Emirates, and uh, we had a meeting there with the counterparts from the uh, Ministry for Education there, and they invited us uh, to uh, visit a library in Dubai. The meeting was there, actually. It was a, a modern library, state-of-the-art, and uh, everything is digitized, but still they believe that it's very important to preserve books um, as their material carriers. 
And uh, my question, Mikhail, is to you. First of all, of course, concerning your opinion about the book heritage as an element of the environment forming an individual. And the second question related to the first one is as follows. Now, they say that young people do not read books any longer. They do not go to libraries. Do you see students in your library? No, they never left us. Yes, dear friends, you know, a library to, a, to an extent is um, a, a crystal through which we can look at all the um, uh, questions we have been discussing because the library is a, a historical heritage by itself and it's also a symbol of this historical heritage. Now, have a look. Uh, over the past 30, 40 years, the, we had a feeling well-educated people, um, among others, that a library goes somewhere in the background because there are so many competitors of the library. Um, uh, the new communication means uh, make it possible to get acquainted with everything, including documentary uh, docu do documents. And uh, uh, um, uh, But at the same time, large libraries are being built, uh, starting with the French uh, um, uh, National Library, the Mitterrand Library, the National Library in Belarus, and the mentioned the uh, libraries in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, so very large buildings, a lot of money is uh, invested. Um, uh, uh, these amounts of money actually go beyond the rationality, but that is all because the library in the public no notion and by its functions is a symbol of culture. And um, uh, so it's an institute, it's an organization, and moreover, it's the material manifestation of those that can be demonstrated to our own society and to the world as a manifestation of the embodiment of the high culture typical of the, the state. So that is uh, uh, the public sector's goal indeed. So then after we got this uh, feeling of self-consciousness inside our country, look how national libraries started thriving. The ones that are located in the Russian Federation, new library buildings are constructed. And not only, we see uh, the uh, library collections uh, forming that would re reflect this uh, reinstalled culture. The questions you asked were quite self-evident, whether the cultural environment does affect the formation uh, or plays a formative role. Of course it does, and I agree with our colleagues from the United Arab Emirates. The cultural environment includes everything, folklore, customs, traditions, and it does affect each and any of us. But it affects only to an extent, and language, of course. We need to remember that is the uh, carry of the culture, but we need to remember to what extent the person is aware of this important role of the culture. I myself live in a village and there are hills around. Uh, this is a hill to be used for uh, down the hill skiing, but I might not be aware that this is a, Slav a Slavic mound or a Mongolian mound. Uh, you might be unaware of that. We talk uh, and we do not understand how rich is the history inside this language. Uh, the formulas we use, the, the witch in the fairy tales, and uh, there are layers and layers of culture behind it. Uh, this is a national cultural code, which sometimes uh, a person fails to um, understand and the responsibility of museums, and uh, Elena spoke about this, and uh, is to cultivate this culture, to foster it, and museums also, and as well as libraries, provide an opportunity for other pe for many people to uh, know more about other different cultures and heritages. When the person is aware of that, he starts acting in line with the culture and the heritage he is familiar with. To give a single example, 
There is no uh, such uh, city uh, like St. Petersburg that would really foster the, the need and signal the need to preserve this cultural rich cultural heritage, the, the residents of St. Petersburg are aware of the value of the heritage that they are surrounded by. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mikhail um, Yurovich, uh, for uh, your comments and uh, some of the foci uh, that you draw attention, draw attention to. Yes, indeed, St. Petersburg has a unique attitude towards its own historical and cultural heritage, the pride and patriotism of St. Petersburgers for their city and their country is well known. But what are the ways and means that we could use to form um, the confidence, the conviction um, in the um, meaning of their own heritage, probably in relation uh, to people who live in remote areas and, on the other hand, have respect and interest in other nations' heritage. We spoke about the BRICS principles, the multipolar world principles and mutual respect to other cultures and heritage items, and we spoke about it during the previous section session and in our uh, projected future that we would welcome all the countries would develop according to their own strategy in line with their own cultural evolution and underlying should be all of this should be mutual respect both to your own and other nations heritage would you agree with me in that and if yes how we can achieve that and I'm addressing this question to Alexei Valerievich. Please share us your vision. Can you uh, be more specific in asking questions so that you want me to ask a more specifically formulated question? Yes. OK, I'll uh, specify my question in relation with regard to Moscow and what you talked about. This Moscow uh, Home Guard, Moscow Militia, how we can ensure that this historical memory remains important, interesting, not only for the residents of Moscow, for whom you work a lot, but also to other residents of our country and our international counterparts. How can we ensure that at a mental level they become aware the the glory of the self-sacrifice of our people? And on the other hand, how our people, our Moscow students, could be attracted and interested in the cultural heritage of our neighbors, other countries? Well, answering your question, uh, in terms of the militia uh, projects, uh, we sought to retain the memory of the culture, and we reopened this uh, uh, memory and reinstilled the starting of the project back in 2015. As to students, uh, they need to um, have formats that they can see, touch, and participate. Uh, for uh, middle school uh, learners uh, are different quests, uh, uh, guided tours, some movements in some of the schools. There are school guides uh, trained from among the students, and they I invite other fellow students from other schools to be part of their guiding guided tours. Moscow students, translators, interpreters, and linguists also started an important initiative. They researched uh, German archives, some documents. They translated them into Russian during their classes and uh, put up a, a play basing on the historical documents. We also need to thank Vayan Film, military film, Igor Golnikov, who uh, shot a film about the Moscow militia. And uh, in 
of the last 18 years that have elapsed since this militia movement, uh, not a single uh, movie was uh, released. Uh, that was the first one in the row, um, and it's called uh, By the Call of Your Heart. So there's going to be a documentary and a feature film about that. So um, in terms of the young people, you need to select the, the most appropriate format for them. Uh, we also communicate with our colleagues from other regions at the intergovernmental level. So when we told them about this program of ours, we found out that each almost of the regions of Russia also had very similar uh, uh, civil guards or militia movements in, in Siberia. Uh, some of the militia men came to the rescue of the Moscow uh, counterparts, and these also were volunteers. Uh, Siberian people who came to help save Moscow. Any format that might appeal, um, that might um, an offer an opportunity to touch, to, to print, to type, to translate, to be part of, will work out fine. If to speak about adults, uh, people like you and me, uh, when we were kids, we didn't know about that a lot. I lived um, uh, in the street that is called the, uh, the street of the popular militia. And uh, for us, good books and good films can be used, and the associations of the descendants of these militiamen who uh, got together, who got divided into these uh, divisions and are engaging with the residents of Moscow, I'm ready to share. And this is a wide-ranging initiative which has been implemented here in St. Petersburg and Murmansk. The Polar Militia is another uh, uh, dimension of this project. Different volunteer detachments during the Second World War, during the Patriotic War, are being researched into and reflected in our archives. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing with us some specific recipes, some specific examples of educational work targeted at different groups. This is very much in line with the very idea of our discussion. This is exactly learning history through culture with uh, some elements of cultural heritage and art we popularize and historical knowledge, making it more available and accessible. Thank you very much for that effort. My, sec my next question is addressed to Yelena Yuryevna Gagarina. The Moscow Kremlin Museums, of course, uh, are uh, overwhelmed with visitors having the richest collections. So uh, I don't think we could speak about the superfluous interest, but the extra interest. But we know that it is not easy to get to the Moscow Kremlin Museums. What would you recommend to others in that how could they make their heritage more attractive to the people of the same culture and promote it among the people of different cultures. I'm sure you have many interesting ideas and, and uh, recipes that you might be using in your daily work, and you might be contemplating some of them also. Thank you very much. I think that the interest that has emerged in, uh, in museums after the development of tourism in the post-Second World War times is, an, is, an, is a, the, 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 the challenge that any nation, any government faces, and ours is not an exception. The huge amount of tourists that flooded Moscow and St. Petersburg in the recent times this is uh, not only a challenge, but this is a very good thing because tourists are not only school students and university students. These are adults who travel and who choose what they want to see. 
tourism is important because it provides people with the possibility of uh, engaging with cultures of other countries because travelers can see what is not close to their culture and to their perception and understanding and engage with that. And uh, this promotes their interest and this interest results in very good positive outcomes as to museums and the people who live in the cities where some museums are it is a different story of course all the moscow residents were uh, at least once in moscow kremlin museums and all st petersburg um, people visited local museums but another attraction is when some exhibitions are run, exhibitions that touch upon the themes that are relevant and important for a specific time period. So I think that in order to preserve and retain the interest of the city residents in their own heritage that is located nearby, uh, those who work in museums, museum workers, also need to remember what it is that the residents might find relative in this particular locality. Oh, thank you very much indeed. We know how varied and how um, 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 diverse and uh, is the uh, museum activity of the museums of the Moscow Kremlin. They really try to respond to the needs of the society. And so my question now is uh, to you, uh, uh, Mr. Abdel Rahman. Uh, now we, after your contribution, we uh, um, remembered uh, the library in the United Arab Emirates. And I remember the Louvre um, uh, built in the, uh, Abu Dhabi. And we uh, can see that in your country, a lot of attention is being paid to the global cultural heritage. And um, um, intentionally, you go beyond uh, the, uh, the your own uh, heritage, your own cultural heritage. What are the uh, goals here? Uh, what, and what are the results of that policy? And what uh, might be the results of this uh, particular approach? Okay. Uh, you are right. Actually, uh, UAE now go beyond uh, the UAE national heritage and uh, becomes starting to uh, extend this to the globally. If you ask me what's the goals of this, it's one of the goals. It is it's, uh, give the answer to your uh, previous question, which is uh, one of the goals is to convey our heritage to another countries and uh, uh, to make the culture more uh, knowledge by other countries and other things. And how did and what's the goal of this? The main important goal is to build a bridge and a strong bridge between the culture of UAE and the other cultures of the global, of the, of the nation, which is uh, one of these things, which is uh, low, building the lover on Abu Dhabi, one of the uh, main factors that uh, make uh, strong, strong, uh, a message to the world uh, about uh, building Lover in Abu Dhabi. And uh, uh, this is one of the things that's, one of the items that uh, things, sorry, to, uh, um, to convey the value of our uh, own heritage. Let's go to the points and the main important factors that will make this uh, vision uh, comes true. What they did, and uh, what we are going is making a lot of researches and understanding the cultures of, let's start from UAE, and the culture of the global. Conduct through research on the cultural background and the values and interest of the target audience. This knowledge will help 
will help us and will help the others to tailor the message to resonate with their perspectives. Sharing, sto sharing stories and documentaries about UAE culture and other cultures also is one of the important factors that will uh, convey the message about heritage, about culture. Cultural diplomacy. Cultural diplomacy engaging in cultural diplomacy forums by promoting cultural exchange programs, exhibitions, and collaborations. This can foster mutual understandings and appreciation between your heritage and the target culture. And it will build a strong bridge, as I mentioned, strong bridge between cultures. And uh, this is one of our main vision in the International Institute for, for Cultural Diplomacy, which is to build a strong cultural bridge. Cultural bridge. Participating on in international events and forums to share aspects of our heritage and engage in dialogues with presentations from other countries and civilization, which was what, what, same what we are doing now. Such kind of discussions, it will convey a big message to everyone about culture. Uh, I hope I answered your answer, your question. Indeed, thank you very much. And uh, it seems to me that you mentioned something very important, the interest and the knowledge uh, of um, other cultures um, uh, stimulates the uh, interest to one's own culture uh, and raises the interest to one's own culture. It's a, um, a double way route. We have about 10 minutes uh, left and I suggest a sort of a bl blitz in a way. So I'll uh, ask one question and I will ask all of you to answer this question briefly, although I understand, of course, that uh, it's a question that requires a longer response and um, um, a much fuller response. So on the basis of the discussion on your ideas uh, prior to the discussion after it, so uh, historical heritage today, according to you, is it a burden or a resource? Now, I could explain uh, all that and to tell you uh, that uh, in, in Russia it is rather difficult to work um, within the walls of a monument of cultural heritage. And in a way, it's a burden, but it also might be a resource for development. So let us begin with, with the other end. Mm -hmm. Mikhail? Burden or resource? No, it's a burden. If under burden we understand the responsibility uh, that we have as a representative, as a carrier of culture, and as a person who, because of the professional or some other uh, factors, um, uh, sets a goal uh, to share this resource. So it's a, 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 a burden associated with a responsibility. We would very much like it to be a resource. The resource is not always used, but uh, as a goal, um, uh, we should set it like that and formulate it like that. Um, it must be a resource for the development of each and every individual. Uh, there's no need to go up to the upper levels of the state power, but uh, at our own level, at the level of competences, we need to make sure that people live better, that they understand how to live in the future. So I think, I think that is the resource of the cultural heritage. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the other colleagues, I would like to make it more specific. Uh, uh, burden slash resource. Alexander? Uh, historical heritage uh, that our country possesses, it's a resource. Moreover, 
it's one of the few resources that uh, uh, ensure the development of individuals from the point of view of the future, the understanding of the place we take in this world, uh, in the global civilization. So as for the burden of responsibility, now, let's remember Russian saying that we are not going to shame the memory of our ancestors. But it's re this responsibility is uh, the res this responsibility that is always with us. Our mothers teach us to be better, to be responsible. So in this sense, uh, I think it's the only opportunity. No, uh, the, the, the country has this great heritage. And the very fact uh, of that uh, makes it possible for us to achieve outstanding results. Helena, burden, resource, or both. Thank you very much. I believe, first of all, I agree with the previous speakers, of course. And I would like to add that culture and historical heritage, they are among the most important things created by humanity. And the research of one's own culture and the culture of other people allows us to answer numerous questions and even foresee the development um, uh, of uh, certain events and phenomena, uh, something, sim something similar to which we can find in the past. And in this sense, historical heritage is not only a source of knowledge, but it is also a possibility to enjoy uh, the, uh, to enjoy this knowledge and to enjoy uh, the ability to uh, get pleasure in works of art. So what do you think, Mr. Sambalhudar? Historical heritage will turn into a resource when it has um, a development uh, potential. Uh, if historical heritage uh, does not comply with the present day requirements, then it turns into a burden. The assess then we should uh, treat historical um, heritage in a balanced way. If historical heritage is a potential, uh, then uh, it uh, creates a resource for development. Then, of course, it's a very positive resource for development. Thank you very much. Alexei? Yes, I understand that there is a lot of layers here um, uh, for a representative of Moscow uh, public authority. Now, if we take the historical heritage, first of all, we should divide it into material, uh, tangible and intangible. Now, since next week, we uh, will be discussing the budget of the city next week, as I said. So I understand what we're talking about. Yes, from the point of view of um, expenses, it's a burden. But burden can be pleasant and unpleasant. And this burden, from the point of view of the um, uh, restoration, um, uh, for example, and support in general, it's a pleasant, uh, a nice uh, burden. Uh, we ha are happy to share it. As for, uh, um, uh, the potential, that's our basis, our history. That's uh, uh, the basis of our future. So historical heritage is absolutely needed for our country, for our people. And um, this material um, uh, uh, burden is going to be carried by us uh, in the future uh, through different intangible values. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the um, attitude to the tangible and intangible heritage which Moscow has been demonstrating. And I am saying this as a Moscovite. Now, uh, what do you think of that, uh, Mr. Abdel Rahman? Time, resource, burden? Actually, uh, I consider uh, it can be both. It can be burden 
and it can be a resource for development. Uh, while it can be a source of cultural identity, tourism revenue, and a community pride. Heritage uh, also possess challenges such as conversation costs, potential conflicts, and other and over preservation focus on modern development. Striking a balance between preservation and preservation and development, it is very important to harness the positive aspects of heritage while addressing its challenges. So uh, uh, that's why it can be both like a burden and uh, a source of development. Thank you very much. And uh, well, at the end, you said uh, something quite important. The balance is very important. The balance is important everywhere in our attitude to heritage and uh, in the um, uh, balance of interest um, uh, to our own culture and uh, the culture of other nations and other people. It seems to me that we have um, a very interesting discussion. Um, and, uh, I would like to thank all of you, esteemed participants, each and every one of you, for this most interesting and uh, uh, your contribution. Your opinion were most interesting to our audience, and I was watching how uh, uh, our audience hall was being filled with the listeners with time. Uh, so that means so uh, we... Um, uh, really complied with the expectations of the audience and with the participants of the forum. I would like to thank all of you. Then there will be another session here in this uh, hall, museums, uh, moderated by Mikhail Piotrovsky. And uh, I wish all the participants of the forum successful, fruitful work at the official sessions and uh, when talking to each other, communicating with each other uh, in between the sessions, which is a very important part of uh, the forum. So we round up the session. Thank you very much.